Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the October 2023 International A Level Pure Mathematics P1 paper. Um, this is from Edexcel. And this question here, we have this graph that's drawn for us. It says, figure one shows the sketch of part of the curve C, which has equation one over x plus two. Y equals one over x plus two. And part A of this question says, state the equation of the asymptote of C that is parallel to the y-axis. So when you have a curve like this, which has um, x in the denominator, this type of curve is called a reciprocal curve. A reciprocal curve. All right, when there's x in the denominator, it is called a reciprocal curve. And reciprocal curves have this shape here, and they have these kind of lines that they never touch called asymptotes like this one here okay and the asymptotes occur at values which cause some problem in the equation so for example we know that dividing by zero causes something to be undefined so any value of x which causes the denominator to become zero will cause this to be undefined and you will get an asymptote so if we look at the denominator and we equate it to zero and we solve, if there's a value that comes out as, um, you know, a value of x that causes that to become zero, that value of x will be an asymptote. So here we have x equals negative two. That's an asymptote. When you put x equals negative two in this equation, you get one over zero, which is undefined. And that's what they're looking for in this question. So for part one of the question, you simply write x equals negative two. And there is your answer. Simple as that. Okay, simple as that. And that's the answer to part A. All right. Just to elaborate a bit further, um, you know, that's that's the that, that is the, the asymptote which is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, vertical. There are also horizontal asymptotes. They might have said, what is the asymptote which is parallel to the x-axis? In that case, that asymptote would be the line y equals zero, which is the x-axis itself in this case, because when you have when you put y equals zero into this equation, which as we know the y the x axis is y equals zero, then you end up with zero equals one over x plus two, and this causes a problem in the equation y because when you try to solve, you end up with something which is a contradiction. Doesn't make sense. All right. So in that case, this would also be um, an asymptote, which is the line y equals zero. All right. So that's. We can go into that in further questions, you know, when they come up. But for now, for this particular question, all we need to understand is that when you have a value of x that causes the denominator to be zero, that value of x is a vertical asymptote. x equals minus two is a line that the curve cannot touch. All right, now for part b, kind of like, it seems like it's just gone on to a completely different question. It says, factorize fully x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. Pretty simple. Common factor here is x, All right? So it's x squared plus 4x plus 4. It says fully, little clue there, meaning there might be more than one step. And we can see that this is a quadratic expression inside the bracket, which will factorize further. We find two numbers multiplied to give me 4 and add to give me 4. Well, that's 2. So it's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 2. So we have factorized this fully. Okay, so that's part B done. Pretty simple. Now for part C. It says a copy of figure one labeled diagram one is shown on the next page. In fact, it's shown below because I, I just drew it. I just rearranged it so it's below. So I don't have to keep moving pages. On diagram one, add a sketch of the curve with equation y equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. Now we just took that equation and we expressed it as x times x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now, when you have an equation like this, this is a cubic. So we're going to sketch this curve. This is a cubic curve, all right, because the highest power is x cubed. Now, cubic curves either have a shape where they do this, go up, down, and up again, or like this, down, up, and then down again. When the coefficient of x cubed is positive, it looks like this. When the coefficient of x cubed is negative, it looks like this. Here, the coefficient of x cubed is positive. So it's going to have this type of shape. It's going to have this type of shape up and then up. Okay. 
For us to be able to, to sketch a cubic curve, we have to understand where does it cross the y-axis. Now, any curve, it crosses the y-axis, no matter what curve it is, it crosses the y-axis when x is 0. And any curve, no matter what you know, um, type of function it is, if it crosses the x-axis, it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. As we just discussed, the y-axis is the line x equals 0. Everywhere on the y-axis, x equals 0. On the x-axis, every y coordinate is 0. It's the line y equals 0. So you want to find something, we want to find something, you want to find where something crosses the y-axis to replace x with 0. If I replace x with 0 in this function here, you'll see you're going to get y equals 0. So it grows, goes through the origin. So it doesn't cross the y-axis anywhere except at the origin. Okay, so it's going to go through that point there. And where does it cross the x-axis? Well, we have to put y equals 0. Okay. Um, okay, when we put y equals 0 into this equation, you're left with x times x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0, which gives us the solutions either x equals 0 or x equals negative 2, or as you can see here, it says x equals negative 2 again. Now, this is a special type of root where you have the same answer twice. In fact, this can be written as y equals x times x plus 2 squared. Whenever you have this type of repeated factor in any type of, uh, you know, graph, this is a special type of place where it crosses the x-axis. It crosses the x-axis at minus 2. It doesn't actually cross it when it's a, a, a squared. It actually turns on the x-axis. It's a turning point, all right? So this graph will have this type of shape. When x equals 0, it will cross the x-axis. When x equals minus 2, it will turn on the x-axis. Okay? So we can see here, if we look at this graph, it's going to cross the x-axis here. It's going to turn on the x-axis here. So it's going to have this type of shape. It's going to look like this. But this turning point is going to be here. And the crossing of the x-axis is going to be here. So it's going to turn. It's going to turn over here somewhere like this. So if I just draw it, try and draw it as best as I can. It's going to turn on the x-axis here. Then it's going to turn again and go back up through the x-axis like this. All right, so that's the best. That's the sketch. Try and do the best you can do. That's a bit messed up on this side. Let me try and correct it. So it's going to go. It's going to turn. Let me do it again. Try and do it better. Okay. Let me just zoom in a bit as well so I have a bit more. So now, we know it's going to turn on this, on this part here. So it's going to come up like this. It's going to turn on x equals minus 2. And then it's going to turn again, come down, turn again, and then go up, up again. Something like that. I think that's okay. It's not too bad. Okay, let me just get rid of some of these, these bits here. Okay, that looks okay now. Do this in pencil for sure when you do it. And, you know, as long as it doesn't do things, as long as you don't do something like this, turns back on itself or goes out like this, you know, that kind of stuff, it should be fine. All right? So there we have um, our cubic curve going through minus 2 on the x-axis and the origin, okay? And that's the curve y equals x times x plus 2 squared. Okay, which we drew. All right, let me just zoom back out again. So to the page width. Okay. All right, so now, so we've, we've sketched mar clearly marking the point where this curve cuts or meets the coordinate axis. Okay, that's done. And then it says, hence state the number of real solutions of the equation x plus 2 times x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x equals 1. Now, this looks a bit weird, you know, equals 1. Where did that come from? What you should understand is when you want to work out where two functions intersect, and I'm going to write this as x, um, I'm going to write this as the original function, which is x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. That was the original function that we had. That's in terms of what it was originally. Okay, when we find where two functions intersect, what we can do is we can solve them simultaneously. Now, if we solve these two equations simultaneously, 
we can replace, for example, the, the y here with this. Okay, you, you substitute one equation into the other. So I'm going to take this y and replace it with, okay, so I can say, I can say solving the equations y equals 1 over x plus 2 and y equals x cubed plus 4x square, squared plus 4x simultaneously. Okay, we will get what? We get the following. We get 1 over x plus 2 equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. All right, we replace, I replace this y with that, which then leads us to the equation if I multiply both sides by x plus 2. 1 equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x times x plus 2. So we can see that this is exactly the same as this, right? So we know we see two intersections, two intersections between these two curves, okay? If we look at the graph, we see one intersection over here and another one over there. There are two intersections between these two curves, which means that there are two solutions, two solutions. Okay, so that's how you can, um, you know, explain this. It's only worth one mark, all right? So, you know, if you solve these two equations simultaneously, all right, you'll get exactly the equation which they've told us to state the number of solutions for, right? And as these two curves, they intersect in two places, like when you solve two equations simultaneously, you're finding basically where they intersect. That's what you're finding, all right? So this is y equals, uh, you know, 1 plus 1 over x plus 2, and this is the equation here, okay, which we have, well, we've got already, y equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x, they intersect in two places, therefore the solution to the equation that is derived from equating them or from solving them simultaneously is that same equation they showed us, that means that has two solutions. And that concludes question number four from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 paper. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this region here of the uh, screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the uh, topic of, I guess this is graph sketching, can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link that you'll find down here. And if you would like to find uh, other, other material on my channel which you might be interested in, this video will help you to find where to look for it. Thank you for watching and see you soon.